At this moment, Ace has died in front of Luffy, causing him immense anguish. Whitebeard is also very angry, destroying the entire Marine headquarters to defeat Akainu. In the end, he was defeated by Blackbeard's crew, and he has obtained Whitebeard's devil fruit, terrifying everyone. While Akainu is still trying to eliminate Luffy, fortunately, Shanks arrived to stop him and said, we're here to end this battle. Meanwhile, Luffy has been taken aboard Law's submarine for treatment, and they managed to escape. At this point, Shanks declares, if anyone wants to continue fighting, come and fight us, instantly striking fear into all the marines. As they are not strong enough to continue battling another Yonko, Blackbeard then taunts Shanks, saying, that scar suits you well, making the situation even more tense. However, Blackbeard agrees to leave, and he said, I've got what I need, now, Shanks is only waiting for the Navy's response. Seeing the deaths of Ace and Whitebeard, he realizes the intensity of this battle. So, Shanks says, hand everything over to us. We will take care of burying Ace and Whitebeard, enraging the Marines. But, Sengoku agrees, and he said he would only do this one thing with Shank, causing everyone to be surprised. So, Sengoku declared, the battle has ended. Thus, the Navy immediately begins treating the wounded while Shanks takes the bodies of Ace and Whitebeard away. At this moment, people all over the world are awaiting the outcome of the battle. Upon hearing that the Navy has emerged victorious, bringing joy to everyone, on Sabaody Island, all the citizens are rejoicing, as the era of Whitebeard pirates has come to an end. Outside Marineford, pirates from the worst generation have gathered here to watch the battle. They realize that with Whitebeard's death, now is their time to shine. News of Marineford's victory spreads worldwide bringing happiness to all, as they have always trusted in the Navy and the world government. On Sengoku's side, he receives news from Impel Down Prison, that many dangerous level 6 prisoners have escaped with Blackbeard's help. He intends to announce this information to the public, but, the world government wants to cover it up. Law's pirate crew has managed to escape from Marineford. Unexpectedly, they are unexpectedly pursued by a Navy ship, they realize that she is Pirate Empress, Boa Hancock but, she has petrified the entire navy on the ship, at this moment, she is very worried about Luffy, suddenly, Law steps forward and says, although temporarily, Luffy has survived, but, his injuries are severe, making Hancock even more worried, then, Ivankov informs them, that Luffy's body had reached its limit since his time in impelled down, yet, he still came here to save his brother, only to witness Ace's death before him, which devastated him, at this moment, Jimbei steps forward, despite his heavy injuries, but, he is also deeply concerned for Luffy, as seeing Ace die in front of him has deeply affected him, Boa Hancock realizes that Luffy is still being hunted by the world government, so, she suggests taking him to the island of women, where he will be safe, the navy thought that with Whitebeard's death, piracy would decrease, but instead, pirates increased in number, as Whitebeard proclaimed the true existence of one piece before his death, in the territories protected by Whitebeard, the civilians are being attacked by other pirates, because with Whitebeard dead, there's no one left to protect them, while Boa Hancock decides to take Luffy to the Island of Women. Ivankov bids farewell to Jimbei, asking him to take care of Luffy, as it was thanks to Luffy that they were able to escape impelled down. Finally, Luffy is taken to the Island of Women, when the citizens saw their queen return, that made them very happy, while Law's group was very excited because it's an island of women. Boa Hancock decides to take Luffy to the castle for care, but, she is stopped by Elder Nyan, who says no men other than Luffy can be allowed on the island, even if they're doctors, but, Law points out that if Luffy's wound is reopened, he will die, which worries Hancock, so, Elder Nyan decides they will stay behind the island, waiting for Luffy to recover, while the islanders bring food every day, much to Law's crew's delight, but, they don't want too much interaction with men, Boa Hancock is deeply concerned for Luffy, while Luffy dreams of Ace, and witnessing his death, which shocks him awake, so, he jumps out of Law's submarine, surprising everyone, Luffy keeps asking, where's Ace, as he continuously runs around searching for him, Law tells Jimbei, that if Luffy's wound opens, he will die, while Luffy remains out of control, Boa Hancock is overjoyed to hear Luffy waking up, deciding to cook for him, at this moment, Luffy runs into the forest, when he doesn't know where he is, Luffy remembers Ace, and realizing that he's truly dead, this makes Luffy continue to go crazy, even banging his head against the rock, to try to forget Ace's death, suddenly, Jimbei arrives, remembering his promise to Ace, if I die, 
Please help take care of my little brother. Seeing Luffy in agony, Jinbei intends to tell him everything. But Luffy asks, Ace really died, didn't he? Yes, he's dead, prompting Luffy to burst into loud tears. At this moment, Luffy remembers his childhood, when he was scolded by his grandfather for eating the devil fruit mistakenly, and his grandfather wanted both Luffy and Ace to become strong marines. While Luffy doesn't understand, why does he, being a rubber human, still feel pain? But, Luffy is determined to become a pirate anyway, so, Grap takes Luffy to a house on the mountain, which turns out to be Da Dan's family home. Seeing Grap, they become frightened, as they are mountain bandits. Da Dan explains that Ace is now 10 years old, so, they can't take care of him anymore. Unexpectedly, this time Grap wants them to take care of Luffy too, knowing he's Grap's grandson, which surprises them, so, they immediately refuse. Although Grap threatens to put them in jail, they believe being in jail is still better than taking care of Ace. Now, they have to take care of Luffy as well. Suddenly, Luffy gets someone spitting foam in his face. It makes him angry. Grap realizes it's Ace, and says, from now on, you will live with Ace. While Luffy tries to make Ace apologize to him, Da Dan still refuses to take care of Luffy, but when threatened by Grap, they have no choice but to accept. At this point, Luffy still wants Ace to apologize to him. Da Dan then brings food for everyone, seeing lots of meat, Luffy wants to eat too, but he can't compete with them, even being looked down upon by a dog. So, Luffy can only eat a small bowl of rice. While Ace eats comfortably, Da Dan explains that all this food was brought by Ace. If Luffy wants to eat, tomorrow, he'll have to work hard and plunder as well. Unexpectedly, Luffy immediately agrees to, because his dream is to become a pirate someday. Seeing Ace going outside, Luffy follows him, which makes Ace uncomfortable. Turns out, Luffy isn't angry at Ace for spitting on his face anymore, because he wants to be like Shank. So, Luffy proposes to be friends with Ace, but Ace immediately kicks a tree, making it roll towards Luffy, thinking Luffy won't follow him anymore. However, when they reach a bridge, Luffy still follows him. So, Ace immediately attacked Luffy, causing him to fall into the deep abyss below. By evening, Ace brings back food again, but, Luffy is nowhere to be found. While Ace is bathing, he remembers the disdainful words of others towards Roger. At this moment, Ace overhears Da Dan saying, that if Luffy dies, she will tell Grap it was an accident, because he's also a devil's child. Unexpectedly, a week later, Luffy finds his way back on his own, making Da Dan furious, asking him where he has been. But, Luffy refuses to say. So, Da Dan sends him to bed. The next morning, Luffy continues to chase after Ace, to make him be friends with him, but, Ace runs very fast, thus, Luffy can't catch up, even almost being eaten by crocodiles, nevertheless, the next day, Luffy still continues to chase after Ace, but, he was stoned by Ace, the following day, Ace leads him into a dangerous forest, however, Luffy still doesn't give up, every day, he pursues Ace, and two months pass by, while Da Dan wonders why Luffy keeps chasing after Ace relentlessly, making her worried, because every time Luffy returns, he's injured, surprisingly, this time he got stung by a bee, resulting in his face swelling up like a ball, at this point, Ace also realizes how stubborn Luffy is, while Luffy is searching for Ace, he encounters a giant tiger, Ace realized it was the strongest beast of this mountain, seeing Luffy terrified, so, Ace decided to rescue him, unexpectedly, a giant bear appeared, seizing the opportunity, Luffy immediately fled. Finally, Luffy is safe, but in the following days, he continues to chase after Ace, despite Da Dan's attempts to stop him. But, Luffy still didn't give up. Now, he has reached the end of the forest, and Luffy sees the Grey Terminal dump site. It's a large dump site emitting grey smoke, reserved for the poor and criminals. Luffy rushes inside to find Ace. Meanwhile, Ace notices two individuals, seeing they have money, so, Ace immediately stole their money. At this moment, Luffy continues his search for Ace, and finally spots him running into the forest. So, Ace met one of his friends, turns out, his name is Sabo, and both of them competed to see who could steal more treasures, which surprises Sabo, because this time Ace won against him. Turns out both of them from five years ago stole the treasure and brought it here, and earned money to buy a large ship to become pirates. Unexpectedly, they were discovered by Luffy, realizing both of them also wanted to become pirates. So, Luffy wants to join them. Both of them immediately punched and caught him, 
Sabo recognizes him as the kid who always chases after Ace. At this point, Luffy knows the secret of both of them. So, Ace and Sabo decide to kill him, making Luffy terrified and scream. But, they've never killed anyone before, so they don't know how, by chance, Luffy's scream is heard by a group of pirates, who are also looking for Ace and Sabo, because Ace stole their money. At this point, both of them release Luffy, and are trying to find a way to escape, because they were no match for them. Unexpectedly, Luffy disappears, turns out, he has been caught by them. So, Luffy cries out for Ace to save him. Realizing Luffy knows where Ace is hiding the treasure, he forces Luffy to confess. While both of them worry that Luffy will reveal the treasure's location, unexpectedly, Luffy claims he doesn't know, so, they capture Luffy. At this point, he brings Luffy back to the grade terminal dump site, and used a large hammer to strike him. But, Luffy is a rubber human, so, his hammer had no effect, and he decided to torture Luffy in another way. While Ace and Sabo were trying to collect the hidden treasure elsewhere, he used spiked gloves to torture Luffy, forcing him to reveal the treasure's location, causing Luffy great pain, but, he still refused to confess, so, he continued to beat him, by evening, Ace had hidden the treasure elsewhere, suddenly, Sabo ran back to inform him, that Luffy still hadn't revealed anything to them, and was still being tortured, making Ace worried, at this point, he continued to beat Luffy relentlessly, but no matter how hard he hit him, Luffy still refused to say anything, making him angry, and deciding to kill him. Unexpectedly, Ace and Sabo immediately appeared. Ace then attacked him, but he was caught by him. Sabo then struck him on the head to save Ace. At this moment, Ace continued to fight him, to let Sabo rescue Luffy. Unexpectedly, Ace didn't want to run away, so Sabo decided to stay and fight him. By nightfall, they had emerged victorious. The captain, Blue Jam, saw his subordinates being defeated, making him furious, and determined to find Ace to get the money back. On Luffy's side, he was crying, and thanking Ace for saving him, which made Ace uncomfortable, and he asked, why didn't you reveal everything to them from the beginning? But Luffy was afraid that if he did, Ace wouldn't be his friend anymore. Ace realized that Luffy didn't have parents like him, and going with Ace made Luffy feel very comfortable. So, Ace remembered all the criticism from everyone, saying he was the son of a devil, and didn't deserve to live in this world. But, Luffy wanted Ace to live, which changed Ace's thoughts about Luffy. Thus, he blamed Luffy for being too weak and just crying. But, Luffy said he was only 7 years old, and if he were 10 like Ace, he would definitely be stronger. Seeing both of them arguing, Sabo immediately stopped them because they were surely being searched for by Blue Jam now, so, they couldn't stay in Grey Terminal anymore. The next morning, Da Dan discovered another kid in the house, which shocked her, but, Sabo was very smart and knew how to win Da Dan over, so, she agreed to let Sabo stay on the condition that all three had to do household chores. Unexpectedly, they immediately ran outside. At this point, all three of them had breakfast. Sabo was curious about what devil fruit Luffy had eaten, so, Luffy said, I ate the Gomu Gomu fruit. But, Ace said Luffy's devil fruit was too weak, which made Luffy angry, while Sabo found Luffy's rubber body very interesting. Thus, Luffy immediately inflated his body to show Sabo. Unexpectedly, he was kicked by Ace like a soccer ball, causing Luffy to fall into the water and be swallowed by a crocodile. So, they immediately caught the crocodile to rescue Luffy. Thanks to that, they brought back crocodile meat for Da Dan that night. The next morning, Luffy fought with Ace, but, he still didn't know how to use his power, so, he was continuously defeated by Ace. Then, it was Ace's turn to fight Sabo, however, Sabo was also defeated by him. This time, Sabo fought with Luffy, but, Luffy still couldn't apply his devil fruit power in battle, and he was defeated by Sabo. Ace continued to criticize Luffy's useless power, but, Luffy said that when he was 10 years old, he would surely win them, so, they all went to look for food together, and when they saw a herd of crocodiles, Luffy jumped down, and all three managed to defeat a crocodile, inside the grade terminal, there was a very large wall, separating the city from the slum area, so, Ace brought the crocodile into the city to sell it, suddenly, they encountered a group of thugs, thus, all three of them decided to fight them, turns out, in the middle of this city is a place reserved for the wealthy, and this place is the center of the Goa kingdom. It turns out that Luffy's village is just a small area forgotten by this kingdom. Outside the kingdom's walls is the Grade Terminal, a place for the poor and criminals, 
while inside is reserved for the wealthy and aristocrats, at this moment, all three had pretended to be VIP guests to enter a restaurant for a meal, which they enjoyed very much, but, because they ate too much, they were discovered by the restaurant owner, so, all three jumped out the window to escape, suddenly, a man saw Sabo, thus, he told Sabo to go home, but, Sabo didn't care and continued to run away, at this point, Luffy and Ace realized, that Sabo was hiding something, so, they pressured Sabo to speak, it turns out Sabo is from an aristocratic family, and the man who called him was Sabo's father, before, he always forced Sabo to study hard so, he could marry the royal daughter, while out, Sabo encountered a royal brat, who demanded Sabo to carry him home, but, Sabo refused and pushed him away, which angered him, so, the two of them fought each other, this incident made Sabo's mother angry, at this point, he realized that his parents only cared about their status and wealth, thus, Sabo secretly went outside the grade terminal, to listen to the people there talking about the outside world, at this moment, Sabo declared to Ace and Luffy, one day, I will set sail and become a powerful pirate, and I will write a book about this world, it made Luffy and Ace excited, so, Ace also said, I will become a famous pirate, to make everyone in the world unable to deny his existence, Luffy also immediately voiced his dream, surprisingly, it made Ace and Sabo burst into laughter, as they considered it a whimsical dream, at that moment, Ace took out Da Dan's bottle of sake, saying that when they drank from this cup together, the three of them would become brothers, making them very happy, they clinked their cups and drank together, the next morning, when Da Dan woke up, she found herself trapped in a pitfall, it turned out that Luffy's group had dug this hole to catch wild boars, while all three of them had gone into town to fight the thugs, unexpectedly, they were spotted by the police, so, Ace immediately told everyone to run away, by evening, the three of them had captured a deer for Da Dan, when there's food, they joined everyone here in a scramble for food, that makes Da Dan angry because these kids are too noisy, after finishing their meal, she had to clean up again, unexpectedly, Luffy's group continued to wreak havoc, it made Da Dan very annoyed, by evening, she was finally able to go to bed, on the upper side, Luffy's group still wanted to fight each other, at this moment, Da Dan was reminiscing about her youth, unexpectedly, she got hit by Luffy, which made Da Dan very angry, so, the next morning she had to find a way to chase them away, thinking it was Grap's doing, making Da Dan scared, it turned out that the village chief and Makino came to visit Luffy, seeing Makino come made Luffy very happy, she brought Luffy a new outfit, she even brought new outfits for Sabo and Ace, but, Ace was very shy around Makino, so, Luffy and Sabo teased him, then, Makino cooked food for everyone, making them very happy, unexpectedly, there was someone trapped outside, while Ace and Luffy were talking about becoming pirates for sure, unexpectedly, Grap appeared, surprising everyone, so, he immediately hit Luffy and Ace, even hit Da Dan, for not disciplining the brats properly, at this moment, Sabo realized that this was Ace and Luffy's grandfather, seeing Luffy still determined to become a pirate, so, he continued to beat all three, making Sabo feel like he was a monster, at this moment, when Grap and everyone went to sleep, Ace realized that if they stayed here, they would be killed, thus, all three decided to plan their escape, the next morning, Da Dan discovered that Luffy's group had left, but, Grap didn't care, because his time off had expired, so, Grap assigned the task of training them to become marines to Da Dan, but when Grap left, Da Dan didn't care either, on Luffy's side, they were caught in the rain, thus, all three immediately sought shelter, while Da Dan realized that the rain was worrying, so, she decided to look for Luffy's group, by this time, the rain had stopped, Sabo decided to establish a base here, so, all three of them started running towards the junkyard to collect scrap wood, and they began building the base, while Da Dan was anxiously searching for them, finally, Luffy's group's base was completed, making all three very excited, because they could see the whole island from up high, at this time, Dagra and Magra found Luffy's group, so, they ran back to inform Da Dan, although she pretended not to care outside, but, that night Da Dan went to Luffy's group's base, making her very happy that they were still safe, unexpectedly, Da Dan fell into a trap, and she was kicked out, making Da Dan furious, and saying she would never come here again, at this moment, winter had arrived, so, Luffy's group hunted a snow bear together, unexpectedly, Luffy managed to defeat it, making him very happy, Suddenly, a giant tiger appeared, making Luffy anxious, 
saw Bo realized it just wanted to take Luffy's bear, but, Luffy insisted on not letting it take his food, so, Luffy kept blocking it. Luckily, Ace and Sa Bo managed to take Luffy away. By evening, they found other food, but, Luffy still felt uncomfortable, because the tiger had taken his food. Unexpectedly, Luffy fell off the bridge. Luckily Sa Bo and Ace caught him. By nightfall, Luffy remembered when Ace and Sa Bo helped him. He felt they were really good brothers, so, Luffy imagined, in the future, he would be the captain of both of them, which made him very happy. Thus, Luffy told both of them that they would be his crewmates in the future, but, Ace and Sa Bo didn't want to work for anyone, so, Luffy proposed, if anyone defeated that tiger first, that person would become the captain, so, they agreed, the next morning, all three went to find that tiger together, unexpectedly, a bear appeared, making Luffy disappointed, but, Ace said this bear was as strong as the tiger, thus, they decided to defeat this bear, Ace attacked it, unexpectedly, it made the bear angry, so, it immediately chased all three. Luffy thought he was going to die, suddenly, the bear was attacked, an old man appeared, surprising all three. When the bear continued to attack him, he used conqueror's hockey, making the bear stop, so, he chased it back into the forest. Luffy realized this man's power was like shanks, by nightfall. They grilled fish to eat, Luffy and Sa Bo were very surprised, because this old man used to be a pirate captain and he now picked up trash every day, he even got bullied by others, but, Sabo didn't expect him to be so strong, at this point, Ace asked, why would a pirate like you be here? Thus, he told them, it turns out he once fought against pirate King Roger, but he lost, causing his pirate crew to disband, so, he ended up stranded here, even though he lost, he still recognized Roger's pirate crew as very powerful, Sabo realized Ace had left, suddenly, Luffy asked the old man to train him, so, he agreed, at this point, Sabo told Luffy that Roger was Ace's father, making Luffy surprised. But, he didn't like Roger, so, Sabo warned Luffy not to mention Roger in front of Ace. Unexpectedly, as soon as they got home, Luffy immediately talked about Roger, making Ace angry and hitting both of them, so, all three continued to fight each other. That night they decided they were no longer brothers, on Blue Jam's side, he was still searching for Sabo, because his father hired him to find his son, the next day, they continued to look for the tiger to defeat it, but, the tiger was too strong, so, Ace and Sabo were chased by the tiger, eventually, they managed to escape from the tiger, Sabo didn't know how Luffy was doing now, because he had gone to the old man's training place, but, Ace didn't care about Luffy, suddenly, a big tree fell towards them, it turned out Luffy had cut down this tree, at this point, they returned to the old man's place. Sabo realized the old man had made a target for Luffy to practice aiming. Unexpectedly, Luffy accidentally punched him, making Sabo laugh. At this moment, Ace asked the old man, do you hate Roger? However, the old man said, I lost because I wasn't strong enough, but I am grateful to Roger, surprising Ace. It turns out when he lost to Roger, he begged Roger to spare his crewmates. Unexpectedly, Roger left. So, he acknowledged Roger as a very great person, but, Ace didn't believe him, because many people hate Roger, but, the old man said they had never fought Roger, because in the pirate world, when someone loses a battle, they must die. Ace continued to ask, what if Roger had a child? He said, Roger's child would have a very difficult life, because of their father's infamous name, Ace thought he was lying, so, Ace angrily attacked him, but, he was quickly defeated by him. Thus, he told Ace to follow him to see something. Upon arriving, they were surprised to see a large ship. It turns out he went to the junkyard every day to pick up wood. To build this ship, at this point, the old man asked Ace to help him complete the ship, because he would use this ship to set sail, and find his former crewmates. So, Ace agreed to help him. The next morning, they collected wood together, to help him build the ship, and the old man also taught all three of them many things. At this point, both Ace and Sa Bo had improved a lot but, only Luffy still accidentally punched the old man, making him angry, so, he told them, to become a captain, it's not just about strength, they also need something more important, making all three curious, but, he forgot what that was, by evening, Ace still couldn't sleep, so, he immediately went to find the old man, to ask what the important thing to become a captain is, but, he didn't know either, he only knew that in the end, the crew still called him captain, so, to become a captain, he needed the acceptance of the crew members. The next day, the old man's ship was also completed. Thus, 
he was very grateful to Luffy's group for helping him, so, he decided to help all three hunt down that tiger, making them very excited. Thus, all three went into the forest together to find the tiger. When the tiger appeared, Ace immediately attacked it, but, he was knocked away by it. Then, it was Saw Bo's turn to catch the tiger with a fishing rod, but, he also couldn't hold onto it. So, the tiger attacked Luffy, making Luffy frightened, seeing Luffy in danger. Ace and Sabo rushed to help him block the attack. At this point, Ace remembered the old man's words, so, he told both of them to cooperate with him. While Sabo was attracting the tiger's attention, Ace used Luffy's abilities to create a powerful elastic force to push him to attack the tiger, and he defeated it. Sabo and Luffy thought Ace would become the captain, but, Ace declined. Because he didn't defeat the tiger alone, the old man felt his job was done, so, he decided to leave and he hoped to meet Luffy's group out at sea, which made them very happy. The next day, all three of them were out together searching for materials to repair their base. Suddenly, Sabo was discovered by Blue Jam. They immediately captured him. Fortunately, Ace and Luffy arrived just in time, so, they fought against them together. Surprisingly, Blue Jam's gang was very strong, and they quickly captured the entire group. At that moment, soldiers also arrived, it turned out that Sabo's father had hired them to bring Sabo back. He didn't want Ace and Luffy to be in danger. So, Sabo agreed to return with him, which made Ace and Luffy angry, as Sabo always wanted a life of freedom. Even though he didn't want to, he was forced to return. Blue Jam unexpectedly captured Ace and Luffy and brought them to his base. There, Blue Jam claimed that the nobles were all deceivers and ordered Luffy and Ace to work for him transporting his goods to locations marked on this map. Surprisingly, Ace agreed, but he had to pay them. So, Ace and Luffy helped them transport the goods. On Sabo's side, he had returned home. When he entered the house, he saw his mother leading a little boy, leaving Sabo puzzled about who the kid was. It turns out his parents adopted Steli to replace him. By evening, Steli found Sabo and told him, if he didn't return, he would die tomorrow. It turns out in three days the celestial dragons will come to this kingdom. So, the king decided to destroy Great Terminal, making Sabo angry, because many people are living there. But, this kingdom only sees Great Terminal as its disgrace. So, Sabo decided to return to Great Terminal to inform everyone. At this point, Sabo found out, Blue Jam is transporting barrels of oil and explosives, to prepare for the destruction of Great Terminal, on Luffy's side. He is still worried about Sabo. But, Ace thinks it's better for him to stay there. The next morning, Sabo realized. The nobles in the city are all very comfortable. Even though they know Great Terminal is about to be destroyed. They even keep it a secret from outsiders. Which shocked Sabo. Because he realizes they don't care about the life and death of the people in Great Terminal. So, he wants to immediately inform Luffy and Ace. At this moment, Sabo is trying to run outside as fast as possible. But, he was caught by soldiers. By evening. Blue Jam was telling Ace and Luffy, Great Terminal is about to be destroyed, making them very angry, because he deceived them into transporting barrels of oil, so, he asked Ace, where are your treasures hidden? On Sabo's side, he was taken back home, thus, his father imprisoned him in the basement, causing Sabo a lot of pain, because he couldn't go and inform everyone, by evening, they were starting to set fire, causing the entire Great Terminal area to blaze. Even Da Dan on the other side of the forest could see, at this point, the residents were extremely frightened, so, they tried to run into the city, but, they were all stopped by soldiers, they even closed the gates, not allowing them in, leaving the people here desperate. Meanwhile, Blue Jam was very excited, because the king promised him, after he completed this task, he would become a nobleman, unexpectedly, they've tied up Ace and Luffy again, making them caught in the flames, at this moment, Blue Jam thought they would open the door for him but, no one opened the door for him, so, he realized he was deceived. It turns out the king only used him to take the blame for burning Great Terminal. Luckily, Ace managed to untie Luffy. Thus, they both ran away together from there. On Sabo's side, he also found a way to escape, so, he ran back towards Great Terminal to open the door, but, Sabo was blocked and beaten by the guards, leaving Sabo exhausted. However, he was still worried about Ace and Luffy. Suddenly, Dragon appeared. He asked, what's up, kid? So, Sabo told Dragon about the plan to burn down Great Terminal, and he felt ashamed to be born as nobility, surprising Dragon, because in the Goa Kingdom, there's a kid like this, on Ace and Luffy's side, 
they were trying to run away from there. Unexpectedly, they encountered Blue Jam, so, they were surrounded by Blue Jam and his men. It turns out they wanted to know where Ace's treasure was hidden. Ace realized there was no other way, so, he decided to reveal the location of the treasure to them, making Luffy very uncomfortable. It turns out they wanted to take the treasure, to come back later for revenge on the nobles, because he believed all nobles are deceitful people, but, Ace said Sabo is not like them, making Ace and Luffy angry, because he kept speaking ill of Sabo, so, Luffy attacked them, when they were about to kill Luffy, Ace accidentally used Conqueror's hockey, making all of Blue Jam's men faint, making him angry, because he didn't know what Ace did, when he was about to kill Ace, luckily, Da Dan arrived in time to save him, so, Da Dan pushed him back, seeing Luffy injured, making everyone very worried. Blue Jam realized that Da Dan is a mountain bandit. Da Dan said, I am the foster mother of Ace and Luffy, so, I will not allow anyone to harm my children, seeing Blue Jam still very confident. Thus, they ran away. Surprisingly, Ace still wanted to stay and fight him, because he would never run away. Da Dan recognized this as Ace's personality, so, she decided to stay and fight with him and Da Dan told everyone to take Luffy away, thus, they fought Blue Jam together, on the side of the people of Grey Terminal, they were very desperate, unexpectedly, a strong wind blew in and extinguished the fire, people saw a path leading to the sea, making them very happy, it turned out the one who saved them was Dragon, at this moment, Ivan Cobb wondered, why Dragon had special interest in this kingdom, Dragon said, I will never abandon the suffering people, and one day I will change this world, Dragon then declared to everyone, but whoever is ready to fight for freedom, come aboard the ship, which made everyone rejoice, on Luffy's side, he was still very worried about Ace, while the fire was burning fiercely, the next morning, Luffy was still determined to find Ace, but, he was very seriously injured, he missed Ace and Sabo very much, while the soldiers began to clean up Grey Terminal, the nobles were still very comfortable, at this moment, Sabo woke up in an alleyway, so, he tried to find a way to escape, but, the soldiers were still looking for him, unexpectedly, he was caught again, this time making Sabo's father very angry, so, he decided to lock Sabo up at home, and forced him to become a noble, he even threatened to harm Ace and Luffy, thus, Sabo had to obey him, now, Sabo was imprisoned at home, but, he was still very worried about Luffy and Ace, and he wanted to regain his freedom, suddenly, Sabo overheard the guards talking, they said the celestial dragons would come tomorrow, the next morning, Sabo planned to escape. While everyone in the city was very excited to welcome the celestial dragons, suddenly, people saw a small boat sailing out to sea. It turned out to be Sabo. At this moment, Sabo decided to become a pirate to regain his freedom. Suddenly, the celestial dragon on the ship saw Sabo, so he shot at him because Sabo dared to block his path. Although knowing there was only a child on the ship, but everyone dared not say anything. For fear that the celestial dragon would get angry, Dagra saw that Sabo was on the ship. While Sabo was trying to put out the fire, then, the celestial dragon fired another shot at his boat, making everyone shocked. While Luffy and the others were worried about Ace and Da Dan, finally, they survived and returned, making Luffy very happy, because Ace was still alive. At this moment, Ace recounted the events of that night to everyone. It turned out they had fought Blue Jam together, in the end, they defeated him but, they didn't know how to escape from the fire, so, Da Dan decided to use herself to clear the way for Ace, causing her to be severely injured, thanks to that, they escaped from Grey Terminal, the next day, Ace went into the city, to get medicine for Da Dan's treatment, so, both of them survived, at this moment, Ace and Luffy were worried about Sabo, Da Dan asked Ace why he didn't run away at that time, but, Ace said it was his personality, if he ran away, he would leave important things behind, and Luffy was behind him, so, Ace couldn't run, Da Dan remembered what Garp once said, when Roger faced a strong opponent, he never backed down, because he didn't want people behind him to be in danger, suddenly, Dagra returned, so, he told everyone about Sabo's story, making everyone shocked, Ace always believed Sabo would be happy with his family, but, he was wrong, because Sabo has never been happy returning to his family, making Ace very angry, and wanting to revenge against the celestial dragons, but, he was stopped by Da Dan, because he would be killed if he went there, while Luffy was in despair, because currently they couldn't do anything, the next morning, Ace calmed down, suddenly, they received a letter from Sabo before he set sail, so, Ace read it, Sabo said he would set sail as a pirate before Ace and Luffy, 
and hoped that one day they would meet again, Sa Bo instructed Ace. Take good care of Luffy. Although Luffy is a crybaby and fragile, but Luffy is our little brother. Finally, Ace couldn't hold back and cried. On Da Dan's side, she was angry because the entire kingdom covered up Sa Bo's death. While Luffy was still very sad, and he remembered the memories of all three siblings, suddenly, Ace came and hit Luffy. At this point, Luffy said, Ace, I want to be stronger, to protect people and not lose anyone anymore. So Ace, please don't die, making Ace angry and declaring to Luffy, I will never die, because I can't leave behind a weak little brother like you. Listen Luffy, we'll have to live without regrets, and someday we'll set sail, freer than anyone else. So, both promised to set sail as pirates at the age of 17, at a village near the kingdom of Goa. Zoro was trying to train, while everyone was surprised, because there was a large ship docked near their village. Turns out that ship belonged to Dragon, surprising Ivankov, because Dragon had brought someone severely injured here. Turns out he had attended the Celestial Dragon reception earlier, at Great Terminal, after the Celestial Dragons left. Everything returned to normal and this place continued to be a dumping ground for the nobles. At this moment, Luffy was fighting with Ace, thinking he would land a punch on Ace, but Luffy hadn't made any progress yet, making Ace laugh and tease Luffy. Your rubber devil fruit really has no effect in combat, making Luffy angry and argue back. Suddenly, they remembered Sa Bo, who always helped them reconcile. Luffy immediately thought that Sa Bo made a better older brother than Ace, so both continued arguing. At this time, Da Dan received a message from Ace, saying he would establish his own kingdom. Suddenly, Luffy also sent a message. Turns out both wanted to live separately and independently. At this moment, Luffy was fighting a bear, but Ace didn't want to help Luffy. Unexpectedly, Luffy was injured by the bear, making Ace worried, so he immediately carried Luffy home for treatment. Seeing Luffy severely injured, made Ace blame himself and feel guilty towards Luffy for not fulfilling his duty as an older brother. The next morning, Makino came to visit Ace and Luffy. So, Ace asked Makino to teach him how to express gratitude. Turns out Ace wanted to go see Shanks to thank him, because Shanks had helped Luffy, surprising Makino. The next day, Ace and Luffy went out to steal food again, but this time, Ace and Luffy expressed gratitude for the meal. Then, they continued training together, and both managed to defeat a giant bear making them very happy. In the following days, they continued training together, even getting beaten up by Grapp for refusing to join the Navy. Seven years later, Ace was 17 years old, while Luffy was 14 years old. So, Ace began his journey as a pirate. He bid farewell to Luffy and everyone, making everyone very happy. But only Da Dan didn't come to see Ace off. At this moment, Da Dan remembered when Grapp sent Ace to her to raise, although she pretended not to care. But, Knowing Ace sent his thanks to her, made Da Dan burst into tears. Now, only Luffy remained, so, he was determined to train for another three years. Unexpectedly, this time he landed a punch right on the rock. And he was determined to become even stronger. Sometime later, Luffy heard the news that Ace had formed a pirate crew, which made him very happy. Three years later, Luffy turned 17, but, Da Dan didn't want to see him off, because if they went down the mountain to bid farewell to Luffy, the people of Fusha village would be afraid of them. So, Luffy thanked them, and said, although I don't like mountain bandits, but, I like all of you. Which greatly moved Da Dan. At this moment, everyone in the village came to see Luffy off, making him very happy, because this time it was his turn to go to sea. Suddenly, a sea monster appeared. Luffy recognized it as the same sea monster from before. So, this time Luffy showed it his strength, and he defeated the sea monster. At this moment, Da Dan secretly came to see Luffy off. She felt very relieved. Because Luffy had become much stronger. Back to the present. Luffy is still in great pain. Because of Ace's death. And he realizes he's too weak. At this moment. Da Dan was drinking a lot of beer at Makino's bar. Suddenly. She heard that Grapp had returned. Everyone in the village came out to ask Grapp about Luffy. Because they were very worried about him. Unexpectedly. Da Dan immediately stepped forward and attacked Grapp. Making everyone surprised. She blamed Grapp, you were on the battlefield, why did you let Ace die? Da Dan kept hitting Grapp, because he couldn't save Ace and Luffy, which made her very angry, but, Makino immediately stopped Da Dan. She realized that Grapp was also suffering, because he was there but couldn't help his grandson. No, Luffy is the one suffering the most. Makino remembered the time when she taught Ace to say thank you, 
because Ace intended to thank Shanks for helping Luffy, remembering the time when the two brothers were happy together, made Makino very sad. At this moment, everyone wanted to know about Luffy's whereabouts, so, Grab told them, that Luffy had escaped from Marineford, which reassured everyone, Da Dan said, no matter what kind of pirate Luffy becomes, I will always stand by his side, so, don't be defeated, Luffy, on Whitebeard's island, Shanks and Marco buried Ace and Whitebeard here, at this moment, Shank also realizes, Luffy is suffering greatly, because he couldn't save his brother, but, Shank is sure Luffy will be stronger, after he overcomes this pain, on Luffy's side, he is still in great agony, because he realizes he is too weak, he can't save anyone, while Jinbei tries to console Luffy, and says Ace's death is not his fault, which makes Luffy angry, so, he attacks Jinbei, but, Luffy is defeated by Jinbei, Jinbei scolds Luffy for being too confident in his strength, but, there are many stronger enemies out there, which makes Luffy recall the battle at Marineford, and he realizes there are many strong foes there, but Jinbei says, don't dwell on what you've lost, remember what you still have, so, Luffy realizes and says, I still have my friends, and he wants to meet them again, at this moment, Jinbei remembers what Ace said to him, I don't have to worry about my little brother anymore, because he has reliable friends, on Zoro's side, he is being surrounded by a pack of baboons, suddenly, one of the baboons attacks him, but, Zoro immediately defeats it, therefore, the pack of baboons together attacks him, Zoro realizes they know how to use weapons like humans, they keep attacking, causing Zoro's old wound to bleed, so, Zoro is dazed, and he is knocked away by a baboon, making Perona worry about him, Zoro realizes the situation is not good, suddenly, the pack of baboons begins to feel afraid, because they sense a terrifying aura, Zoro realizes it's Mahawk, on Chopper's side, he's about to be cooked, because this tribe thinks he's food, luckily, they realize Chopper can speak, so, they release Chopper and apply medicine to him, at this moment, Chopper realizes they are skilled in medicine, but, they say all medicinal ingredients are guarded by giant birds, seeing many sick people, Chopper decides to help them get medicinal ingredients, the next morning, he hangs on a giant tree to talk to the birds, he thinks the young bird he helped before would assist him, but, the birds say they won't let humans take their treasure, so, they attack Chopper. Chopper immediately uses Rumble Ball, to transform and block their attacks. The tribe members come to help him, and they attack the birds, but, Chopper immediately shields them, making him fall into the sea. Luckily, a bird saves Chopper. It turns out to be the mother of the young bird, thanks to talking to the mother bird. Chopper learns that they like shiny things. The birds think humans want to raid their treasure, while they just want medicinal ingredients, but thanks to Chopper, they resolve the misunderstanding. At this point, Chopper is exhausted. When he calms down, he realizes the people here are friendly with the birds. Suddenly, he receives a newspaper. Reading the newspaper shocks Chopper, on Weatheria Island. Nami is being forced to farm, making her angry because she wanted to study meteorology. Suddenly, she sees the latest newspaper, so, Nami reads it on Usopp's Boeen archipelago, he has eaten a lot of fruits here, making Usopp overweight, he even refuses to listen to Heracles and continues to eat, so, they also receive today's newspaper, on Momoiro Island, Sanji is wearing women's clothing, and he also receives the latest newspaper, making Sanji shocked and wiping off his makeup, at this time, Robin is being helped by the revolutionary army, they recognize her as a member of the Straw Hat crew, so, they tell her about today's newspaper, Frankie is on Karakuri Island, which he finds fascinating, because he gets to be inside this amazing laboratory, suddenly, he also receives the newspaper, on Brooke's side, he's composing music for the people here, because they think he's a deity, and he has also seen the newspaper, while Zoro is surprised to see Mahak here, it turns out this place is Mahak's castle, so, Mahak tells Zoro about Luffy's battle at Marineford, which shocks Zoro, knowing Ace died in front of Luffy, while everyone is also very surprised, and realizes Luffy is in great pain, at this time, Law's crew is still waiting for Jinbei to bring Luffy back, suddenly, they see a sea monster killed, making them worried, they don't know who could kill that sea monster, suddenly, they see someone rising from under the sea, it turns out to be Dark King Rayleigh, what surprises them even more, is that he swam to this island, Rayleigh asks, is Luffy here? At this time, Boa Hancock is very happy, because she's bringing food to Luffy, and Hancock keeps imagining scenes of her marrying Luffy, while Jimbei has brought Luffy back to Law's place, suddenly, 
he meets Rayleigh, which surprises Luffy. Even Jinbei is shocked, because he could meet a legendary pirate here, but they don't see Law's crew anywhere. Turns out they have already left. Law realizes that Luffy's name contains the letter D, so, the next time they meet, he will do something very big. At this time, the women of the island are also surprised to see Rayleigh, turns out, he once saved Boa Hancock's three sisters, helping them escape from the celestial dragons, but she only cares about Luffy, even admonishing Jinbei that this is Luffy's food, and only gives him a little to eat, so, Luffy starts eating to regain his strength, making everyone very happy, at this moment, everyone wonders how Rayleigh knew Luffy was here, it turns out that after the battle at Sabodi Island, Kuma told him Luffy's whereabouts, what he didn't expect was that Boa Hancock would fall in love with Luffy, at this point, Rayleigh asks Luffy, are you sure this is the time to meet your friends? Making Luffy remember the battle at Sabodi Island, where they were completely defeated by Kazaru and Kuma, causing all of Luffy's teammates to be scattered, so, Luffy realizes they're still too weak. Rayleigh then has a proposal for him, on Usopp's side, he tried to run away from this island, but he's too fat, and is defeated by the monsters here. Luckily, Heracles helps him, he says this island is very dangerous, once you step in, you can't get out, but Usopp doesn't give up, he is determined to leave this island, even though he has encountered many monsters, suddenly, the entire island turned into a carnivorous tree, and it immediately swallowed everything up, luckily, Heracles managed to save Usopp, he doesn't understand why after Usopp read the newspaper, his attitude changed like that, so, Usopp burst into tears and said, when my friend is in pain, I have to be by his side, Luffy, on Nami's side, she's trying to escape from Weatheria Island, to go back and find Luffy, so, she took one of their boats and left, but, the weather here is too unusual, so, Nami can't control the boat and falls off, the people here locked Nami up, because they don't understand what Nami wants to do, she even punched Haredes, for not letting her go, it turns out Nami stole many books studying weather here, at this point, Haredes wonders, why Nami wants to learn weather knowledge here, but, after reading the newspaper, she wants to leave, Nami said. Luffy is my captain. He had to fight alone in that great battle, and had to see Ace die in front of him, so, I have to go back to meet and encourage him. Seeing Nami cry, made the people here worried, so, they immediately released Nami. Unexpectedly, she immediately kidnapped Haredes, and continues to flee, shocking the people here, because Nami wants to immediately return to Luffy's side, on the Winter Island, the birthplace of Dr. Vegapunk. Frankie is also trying to leave here, but, he doesn't have a boat. Worrying both him and the two old men, they don't know what Frankie wants to do. Because Frankie also wants to return to Luffy immediately, so, he decides to continue infiltrating Vegapunk's research room, to find a boat, but, this place is guarded by the navy, thus, he's being chased by the navy. Finally, he finds a room containing many blueprints, suddenly, Frankie targets a button, causing the entire research facility to explode shocking the islanders, on Zoro's side, he's found Mahawk, he asks, where's Luffy now? But Mahawk doesn't know either, so, Zoro has to go find Luffy on his own. Mahawk says there's a small boat to the west of the island, thus, Zoro goes to get the boat to find Luffy, suddenly, he's attacked by the pack of baboons, and they surround Zoro, unexpectedly, this pack of baboons mimics Zoro's techniques, and attacks him, making Zoro surprised. It even destroyed the small boat, making Zoro angry, on Perona's side, she's very worried about Zoro, so, she goes to find him, at this point, Mahawk remembers his fight with Zoro, he realizes Zoro is a strong swordsman, while Zoro is fighting the pack of baboons, unexpectedly, they know how to use saliva to heal wounds, when Zoro doesn't know how to defeat them all immediately, suddenly, the baboons become scared, Zoro realizes Mahawk is here, he says these baboons are very strong, because they've been through many battles with humans, so, they've learned how to fight, he tells Zoro not to underestimate them, but, Zoro is determined to defeat them quickly, thus, the pack of baboons attacks him, on Brook's side, he's finished writing the music, making the people here very happy, thinking it spells to resist the Longarm tribe, suddenly, they hear that the Longarm tribe is coming, when they thought Brook's music would work, but, Brook says they're just songs, shocking them, seeing everyone worrying, because they think this time the Longarm tribe will take all the women here, suddenly, Brook starts playing music, helping them regain their spirits, when the Longarm tribe arrives, everyone was ready to fight them, finally, the villagers defeated them, 
and captured three Longarn tribe robbers. So, everyone is grateful to Brook. But, Brook wants to immediately go find Luffy, to help heal his heart. Suddenly, Brook suggested they release these three Longarn tribe members, because he thought he had intimidated them. Unexpectedly, they kidnapped Brook, because they realized Brook would help them make a lot of money. At this point, everyone opposed Rayleigh's suggestion, but, Luffy realized, he couldn't let his teammates face danger again, so, he agreed, and decided to return to Marineford. The next day, Luffy's group hijacked a navy ship, surprising the navy, because Luffy, Jimbei, and Rayleigh were all here. So, they used this navy ship to advance into Marineford, on Chopper's side, he's preparing to return to find Luffy, because he also knew Ace had died, although he really wanted to stay here to research medicinal herbs, but, Chopper didn't have time anymore. So, the bird carried Chopper back, making him very excited, because the bird's speed was very fast. Suddenly, Chopper received a new newspaper, making him surprised. Unexpectedly, Luffy did this, on Robin's side, she's also trying to find a way back to Sabaody. At this point, the revolutionary army informed Robin, turns out their leader, Dragon, had always been searching for Robin, because she was the only survivor of Ohara. So, they suggested Robin meet Dragon. But, Robin didn't have time anymore. She wanted to immediately return to Luffy. Suddenly, they received a new newspaper about Luffy. So, they showed it to Robin, which surprised her and made her understand something. On Sanji's side, he's looking for a boat to help him return immediately. Suddenly, everyone saw Ivankov return, making them happy because she's their queen. Sanji also thought Ivankov was the queen. So, he went to sea, which surprised Sanji because Ivankov is a woman. Although Sanji knew Ivankov is transgender, but he couldn't resist Ivankov's charm. At this point, Sanji asked Ivankov about Luffy. Unexpectedly, Ivankov had returned to his true form, which shocked Sanji. Ivankov didn't believe Sanji was a member of the Straw Hat crew, because there was no picture resembling him, making Sanji angry, but he still insisted on leaving. So, Ivankov decided to fight Sanji. If Sanji wins, Ivankov will let him go. He immediately faced Ivankov, but, Ivankov intercepted him, he quickly defeated Sanji, suddenly, Ivankov showed Sanji the latest newspaper about Luffy, which surprised Sanji, at this point, Ivankov talked to Dragon, Dragon wants to gather all the commanders of the revolutionary army, because Whitebeard's death will change the world government, while Ivankov is surprised, because Luffy has come to Marineford causing shock once again, on the side of the marine headquarters, they are very angry, because Luffy dared to return to Marineford once again. Turns out a few days ago, many reporters gathered here, to take pictures of the Marine headquarters after the great battle. Suddenly, they saw a Marine ship approaching, making the Marines surprised, because on the ship is Straw Hat Luffy. When they attacked him, Jimbei created a wall of water to block the cannonballs. At this point, Rayleigh also intervened. He only used small bullets to block the cannonballs. They realized he was the Dark King Rayleigh, which surprised them. But, Luffy's ship only circled around Marineford. They realized Luffy seemed to be holding a funeral. At this point, Luffy's ship entered the bay. So, the Marines attacked the ship and destroyed it, thinking they had killed them. But, they immediately appeared inside. Rayleigh and Jimbei held back the Marines to help Luffy, to help him run to the Ox Bell. Suddenly, Luffy started ringing the bell, surprising everyone, after ringing the bell 16 times. Then, Luffy went to the place where Ace and Whitebeard died, making the navy too afraid to attack him. At this point, Luffy took out a bouquet of flowers and dropped it into the abyss. The reporters took advantage of this opportunity to snap photos of Luffy. After finishing everything, Luffy's group left, leaving the reporters puzzled, not understanding why former warlord of the sea, Jimbei, and former crew members of the pirate king like Rayleigh are now siding with Luffy. They realized this was big news. So, many newspapers were printed and distributed worldwide. At this point, the Marines considered this their humiliation. The elders of the world government were also paying attention to Luffy, because even Jimbei and Rayleigh are now on his side, and they realized that after Whitebeard's death, the three major powers in the world have become unbalanced. So, Blackbeard might become the next Yonko. Sengoku went to meet with Kong, the world government commander-in-chief. Turns out he wants to resign because he thinks he's old, so, he's handing over this era to the younger generation. Sengoku nominated Aokiji as the next fleet admiral. At this point, the news of Luffy still being alive spread worldwide, making Kid very excited. 
All the pirates from the worst generation have now entered the new world. But, the weather in the new world is very harsh. Despite that, they are still eagerly awaiting Luffy's arrival. At this point, Luffy has returned to Boa Hancock's ship. The women here are very curious about Luffy's body. Rayleigh believes that Luffy's crew will understand his message. Chopper, after reading the newspaper, understood Luffy's intentions, making him very happy. Robin has also understood by now, followed by Sanji, which piqued Ivankov's curiosity. While Usopp is still trying to leave the island, but, he received a new newspaper, and he also understood Luffy's intentions. Meanwhile, Nami is angry, and she accuses Luffy of being too selfish. On Frankie's side, the old man is worried about him, because the explosion was too big, so, he thought Frankie wouldn't survive. Unexpectedly, Frankie is still alive, and he also read the newspaper, but, Frankie's face was burned. On Brooke's side, he's being shown off by these three. Luckily, they gave Brooke a new newspaper, so, he also understood Luffy's intentions. As for Zoro, he's very badly injured. At this point, he's also reading a new newspaper about Luffy. However, he still doesn't understand what Luffy's intentions are, making Perona very frustrated. But, Zoro still doesn't understand. On Law's side, his crew members are very excited to go to the New World, because they heard that Blackbeard has arrived there. But, Law remains calm and waits while Blackbeard's pirate crew has entered the New World, making them very excited. Unexpectedly, they defeated Bonnie's pirate crew and captured her. He even wanted Bonnie to be his wife, making her angry and kick him. While he was about to deal with Bonnie, they realized that the Navy had arrived. It turns out the person on the main ship is Akainu, making them frightened and flee. At this point, Akainu found Bonnie. It turns out he was looking for her, because she had escaped from the World Government's authority on Chopper's side, he has returned to his tribe, making everyone very happy, and he decided to stay here to study medicine. So, they led Chopper to their library, unexpectedly, there are many books on pharmaceuticals inside. At this point, Chopper remembered when he was with Dr. Hirolik, and he was told that the world is vast. After that, Luffy invited him to join his pirate crew, and help him explore the world at sea. Unexpectedly, they were defeated and separated at Sabodi Island. Chopper realized that Luffy is the one who suffers the most, I will become a true monster. I promise you, Luffy, I will become stronger, on Nami's side. She saw the old men here looking very angry, so, she pretended to be cute. It made the old men mesmerized, they even apologized to Nami in return. So, Nami decided to stay here, to learn all about the weather in the new world. Because she's the navigator, she will take the captain wherever he wants to go, and Luffy will definitely become the pirate king. It turns out Nami always remembers when Luffy helped her, so, she wants everything to help Luffy, on Frankie's side. They found a secret passage after the explosion, making them very surprised, because this place contains a lot of Vegapunk's research materials, so, he decided to stay here, but, they were scared when they saw Frankie's face, thus, he put on a tiger mask, at this point, they wonder why Frankie doesn't want to leave the island anymore, it turns out Frankie's dream is to sail the sea with his own ship, and Luffy helped him fulfill that dream. So, he wants to help Luffy fulfill his dream. Suddenly, the tiger skin was burnt off. Thus, Frankie ran out, making the navy frightened, because they thought he was a monster. On Sanji's side, he realized the food here is very delicious. So, Ivankov told Sanji, the people on this island are all talented chefs, and the food makes their bodies stronger. So, he asked Ivankov for cooking recipes. But, Ivankov said there are 99 special recipes, if he wanted to learn it, Sanji had to become a woman. Sanji promptly refused, because he is a man and was born to love women. So, Ivankov offered him another chance, he would leave these 99 recipes scattered all over the island. Sanji had to go find it, while everyone else would make him wear women's clothes. At this point, Sanji remembered when Luffy invited him to join the crew, and he was very excited to tell Luffy about All Blue. Finally. Sanji agreed to become Luffy's chef, so, Sanji decided to help Luffy become the Pirate King. And he agreed to the challenge, immediately, everyone attacked Sanji, even though they were very strong. But, Sanji was determined to win, on Brook's side, many people are coming to watch him perform, however, Brook remains seated, because he understands Luffy's intentions. So, Brook realizes he needs to do something to help Luffy, and he remembers when Luffy invited him to join the crew. Luffy also helped Brook retrieve his shadow, 
which made him very happy, because he could continue living, and he decided he would help Luffy, suddenly, Brooke stood up and moved, surprising everyone, so, he immediately started playing music, making everyone dance to the sound of Brooke's instrument, on Robin's side, she agreed to meet Dragon, and she remembered her childhood, having to constantly run away because of the world government's pursuit, until she met Luffy, she's ready to declare war on the world government to save Robin, say that you want to live, I want to live, take me out to sea with you, at this moment, Robin decides she must be stronger, to be able to help Luffy, on Usopp's side, he's trying to lose weight, surprising Heracles, because Usopp suddenly changed to want to be stronger, he always thought Luffy could become the pirate king without him, but, Usopp was wrong, there are still many stronger enemies than them, so, Usopp decides he must be stronger to help Luffy, Usopp accepts Heracles as his master, making him very excited, and he decides to teach Usopp all his knowledge. Usopp realizes if he wants to help Luffy become the Pirate King, he must become the King of Snipers, on Zoro's side. He's begging Mahawk, teach me to become a swordsman, which disappoints Mahawk, because he's asking his enemy, and he thinks Zoro ran away after losing to the Baboon Pirates. But Zoro says, I defeated them, which surprises Mahawk, so, he wonders why Zoro is asking his enemy for guidance. I want to defeat you, unexpectedly. This makes Mahawk laugh. Because he realizes Zoro has found something more important than his dream. So, he agrees to teach swordsmanship to Zoro. Mahawk realizes, when a swordsman puts aside his pride for others. At this moment, Zoro explains to Perona. The tattoo on Luffy's arm, means 3D has been replaced by 2Y. Because they had previously agreed to meet again in 3 days. But, now it's changed to 2 years. And this message is only understood by members of the Straw Hat crew. Zoro realizes they're not strong enough to enter the new world yet. So, they need time to become stronger. At this point, Mahawk begins training Zoro. And he remembers his promise to become the strongest swordsman with Luffy. So, Zoro is ready to fight. Unexpectedly, among the baboon pirates, there is a leader. And it copied Mahawk's sword technique. Making Zoro excited to fight it. On Luffy's side, Jinbei also decides to leave. So, Luffy thanks him for helping him a lot, and he promises to meet Jinbei at Fishman Island. While Boa Hancock really wants to marry Luffy, Rayleigh tells her to take them to the training ground. So, they arrive at Rusukaina Island, north of Amazon Lily. This island has 48 seasons in a year, which excites Luffy a lot. Boa Hancock says she will bring food to Luffy every day. But, Rayleigh tells her not to come, to avoid disturbing Luffy's training, which makes her angry, so, Luffy and Rayleigh start training, while Boa Hancock is still very worried, because this island is too dangerous, at this point, Rayleigh leads Luffy to a giant cabbage, which is the safest place on the island, no monsters dare to come here, and he leads Luffy deep into the island, which excites Luffy a lot, at this point, Rayleigh says he will teach him to awaken his power, called Haki, Suddenly, a giant elephant appears. But, Rayleigh continues to explain to Luffy, that Haki is a hidden power within the creature's body. Seeing the elephant about to attack Rayleigh, Luffy immediately uses gear 2 and intercepts it, but, it's too strong and knocks him away. Rayleigh explains there are two commonly used types of Haki. Surprisingly, Rayleigh anticipates the elephant's attack and dodges it. Rayleigh says this is observation Haki, which can predict an opponent's attack without looking. So, Luffy remembers fighting people who use this type of hockey, Rayleigh says on Sky Island. It's called Mantra. Next is Armament Hockey, creating an invisible armor layer. Unexpectedly, Rayleigh manages to push back the giant elephant, surprising Luffy. So, Rayleigh flicked Luffy's forehead, causing him pain, because Armament Hockey can be used to fight devil fruit users, especially Logia types. But, Rayleigh says there's still another type of hockey. Then, the elephant continues to attack him, surprisingly. Rayleigh just needs to unleash this power. And the giant elephant immediately faints, surprising Luffy. Rayleigh says this is Conqueror's Hockey. Only those with a renowned reputation in the world possess this power. But, this power isn't acquired through training. It comes from one's own will. And Rayleigh says, you've awakened Conqueror's Hockey. But, Luffy still can't control it. It made Luffy very amused. And he realizes he's encountered many people who use hockey. At this point, Rayleigh says Luffy has two years to learn how to use hockey. So, Luffy is ready for the training session. The next morning, he goes to the giant cabbage to leave his straw hat there. At this moment, Luffy remembers his dream with Ace and Sabo. 
and he remembers his teammates waiting for him. So, Luffy begins training with Rayleigh. Today's video ends here. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel to support Oni Chan in the next videos. Thank you for watching. Love you always.